Good afternoon all. In my shed I've got these three weird things. They're very dusty and dirty. Actually I've got these three weird things as well but we'll come to them another day. But these things are just bizarre. I bought them at Maplin and the reason I bought three is because they were going cheap. It's a strange sort of camping thing which is a kind of power station because it came each one of these came with one of these 5 watt amorphous solar panels. So as you can see I've got the three 5 watt amorphous solar panels on my solar shed. Well those panels came with this and at the time I think this was £25 uh, including the solar panel and the solar panels on their own were more than that. So it's got a fan which kind of articulates around like this so you can point it in any direction. I think the idea is that it was a sort of poor man's air conditioning for uh, campers. It's also got a light which might in an earlier version, if I can get the thing out, have been um, fluorescent but this one is actually LED. We'll take a look at that when we get inside there and that articulates in all sorts of strange directions and rotates like that and so that you can uh, tip it up I suppose. Let me get that right. Yeah, like that so that it uh, can sort of down illuminate something you're working on. Um, it's got a very strange clock, analog clock, not sure why you'd want that. There's also a grill there and I think that might have been for a radio but the radio isn't in this thing and up here it looks possibly like there may have been an antenna in some versions of this but again it's not fitted. Um, it's also got a battery compartment here but it's not to uh, for anything battery powered it's actually a battery charger a little tiny switch there that you switch on to charge well up to three triple A's or four double A's I think it just charged them in parallel I don't think it's very sophisticated and then behind this panel there's a, a six volt no a 12 volt uh, lead acid battery so this is the uh, lead acid battery it's a 12 volt four and a half amp hour and that originally sat inside the unit and then you'd plug in the solar panel to uh, the DC 12 volt input. There's a USB 5 volt output but of course that would have been a half amp one so pretty useless now. There's also a 6 volt output and that was some kind of standard back then for Nokia phones so this was considered the mobile phone charging output and this was just general purpose uh, DC 5 volts. But this battery is charged, so let's connect it up and just see what this unit does. So there are also three LEDs on the front here for uh, red low voltage, yellow for charging and green for charged. But uh, this is the fan control, so let's switch that on. And that still seems to work, uh, low and high settings on there. And then this is the light control, and the light also seems to work. But um, it's a bit... Well, rubbish, isn't it? So I think it's time to take this thing apart. Now there are lots and lots of screws holding the two halves of this thing together. So I've got to get all of these out before I can uh, crack open the two halves of this case. That one's a bit tight. Okay, I'll get all those out now. Right, that's all the screws out. So this just comes apart like that. And then the only thing that uh, you can't really see from the outside is that there's actually quite a complicated circuit board in here with a load of MOSFETs uh, on a heatsink up at that top end. Uh, there's a little 8-pin uh, chip there. Let's see if I can get that out, out as well. So uh, there it is. On the top side all you've got are the three LEDs and the two switches that poked through the front. On the back there's uh, an LM 393 that one I think that's comparators there's an LM358 is that op amps I think it is a surprising number of discrete transistors there's probably uh, five or six there and then this uh, what's that LM317 so that's a, a regulator might be fixed might be adjustable I seem to remember these transistors at the top these FETs are IRF uh, IRF Z44Ns. It almost looks 
homemade this thing. It's uh, quite extraordinary. Yes, they're all IRF Z44Ns, apart from the one at the end, which is a 7806 uh, 6 volt regulator. So that's presumably for the Nokia 6 volt output. But yeah, that's quite an interesting board. Lots of uh, red and black wires going to all the switches on the back. This is a bit of a, a, a manual labor nightmare, isn't it? Someone has to wire all this up. So this is the clock module. It's just a standard sort of wall clock uh, module, possibly even an alarm clock. The controls were very difficult to get to because you had to sort of poke a screwdriver through from the back. The battery's seen better days, but uh, yeah, just an ordinary clock. So let's take the screws out on this fan. And uh, that presumably is a 12 volt DC motor. Let's see if I can get that out. So that's the fan. Let's see if that runs if I connect the battery. Yeah, that still works fine. So I'm going to strip that down a bit more, I think. So that's quite a slow running motor. Quite quiet as well. I think it's got a reasonable amount of power. It probably has actually if it runs that slow. Interesting. And uh, that's the motor out, and that looks quite nice. It's got some quite nice chunky windings in there. Certainly hang on to that. Don't think it gives the voltage. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, well, it looks like I've destroyed the USB plug by just pulling it really hard. But these uh, little connectors, DC connectors, uh, might be worth hanging on to those. I might put them in my components drawer. And then there's this uh, light module with a screw-in bulb, as I remember it. So let's open that up and have a look at the bulb. So yeah, this definitely unscrews. And that's a standard um, Edison screw, ES27, I think it is. And then in there are all the LEDs, which I think point out in four different directions. Well, I could take that apart, I suppose. Yeah, so that's the uh, that's the unit, and there are the LEDs mounted on all four sides. Let's see if I can get this thing to light up again. So I've reconnected the battery, and uh, yeah, this lights up on uh, in sort of four directions with what's that? Twenty-four LEDs in total. A strange thing, and why would they make it uh, ES27 Edison screw compatible? weird. So uh, that's it. It's an indescribably strange object with a fan and motor and an odd clock and uh, light and uh, a charge circuit for charging this uh, battery from the solar panel that came with it. Uh, this is a simple charge controller um, with uh, comparators just watching the voltage on the battery and then shutting the uh, MOSFET off when the battery went over voltage and switching it back on when it dropped back below again. And I must have been inspired by uh, the circuit on this thing because I remember using the IRFZ44N as the first MOSFET in my PWM charge controller. I changed it um, after a few of them melted in Malta, interestingly, because it's very hot and sunny there. I changed it for the IRF3205, but uh, the first version had the Z44N, and uh, the inspiration for that actually came from this unit. So all this gubbins, um, for actually less than the price of the solar panel on its own, and it was the solar panel that was the only thing I really wanted, but let's see what I'm going to keep. I'll keep the motor, I think. I'll probably um, screw the cover back on that uh, bulb since it's sort of um, self-contained E27. Keep that, obviously keep the battery. That battery was incredibly useful for testing all the charge controllers that I made. Don't think I'll keep the circuit board because there's nothing really of huge interest on there. Those Z44N MOSFETs, I've got uh, hundreds of those left over when I bought a large quantity. Um, the rest can all go in the trash. So that's my uh, taking apart of this strange solar contraption. Cheerio.